Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Cool. Can you guys see my screen too? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Sweet, dude. Good talk. All right. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, guys. All right. If hey, you guys have, have any questions. Dipesh has sent you his work uh, for review, I oh, guess. Did he? You missed it. Yeah, he sent it on Skype and he's also submitted. Oh, wait, let me check. Yeah. Uh, he might have just submitted it. I didn't download it. Yep. Of course, Depeche. Just always making the class have to wait on you. <sighs> he, he has bad connectivity again. He's also having a power cut. Oh, dude, geez, geez, sucks. Okay, well, let's give you the review and then we'll jump right into the to the questions and the answers. Oh, my wife's coming in dancing, shaking her booty. Put your booty away. I'm in the middle of class. It's not professional. Ay, 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 this woman. Depeche, are you there? Oh, nope, he's not. All right, cool. Um, it's all right, I'll still give you the review. Uh, overall so actually the same kind of feedback that I've given Justin uh, I think is true for yours uh, even with J2 like with like pushing the forms to be more clear um, but here here's the thing too like you kind of like as you were beginning to render and this happens um, you also kind of uh, you know, pushed away your values. And so it's probably, you know, important to kind of keep consistent with your values to make sure that the graphic read is, is nice and strong so that you don't end up with something that everything's kind of just falling into one value range. And then what I would do here is probably make some Strong changes this way. But overall, just cleaner shapes, cleaner forms and keeping that graphic read intact. That's what I'm about. But yeah, I like it. Just cleaner shapes, cleaner forms. Uh, but I think you did a great job throughout the class. Very happy with the progress. Keep at it, my friend. And he has bad connectivity, so I'll, I'll write it for him too. Overall, great work. Same as I told Justin, stronger shapes and forms. And you lost your graphic read. So be sure to not, be sure, sure to not lose track of that as you render. Cheers, at Depeche. Okay, cool. And let's get back to it. <clears throat> Let us get back to it. I wonder if I can make a brush. Because let's see if I can do it while you guys are asking questions. Monica has a question to ask. Nope, not Monica, though. Just kidding, of course, go. Okay. <laughs> too, too, too seriously. <laughs> um, yeah, so mine's a bit of a long question. I, it's a, I, hopefully it's not too comp, it's probably not complicated, just long. Uh -huh. so, um, <coughs> I'll time it. <laughs> so I've been doing, or I've been regularly, I take my sketchbook out. I don't always draw, but I try mm -hmm. to take it with me wherever I go. Sweet. And, uh, and I've been, 
forcing myself to on Saturdays do live painting and drawing at this gallery and I had a really weird thought about you know is there should I prioritize specific things for sketching like in my own personal time is there like something I should do like for as far as priority goes or is it just based on what I need to study or is there like an actual hierarchy or what? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. That was a lot. No, no, it's not actually pretty straightforward. I honestly, um, honestly think it's just important to focus on what you think is important to you. Okay. Right. Like the problem that I have with that kind of question, um, is almost entirely based off of um, the simple principle of just like, like people are trying to make sure that whenever they draw, whatever they do, they're doing it and it's for the right reasons and they have a reason to be drawing the thingy, you know? Yeah. Um, like, so for instance, like, oh, you know, in my sketchbook, should I do to sketch this or should, should I sketch that? You know, and yeah. like what I think you should do instead is is have a philosophy of like instead of thinking about like am I doing the right thing? Okay. Right. Have a philosophy of like I just need to be drawing. Oh, all right. Okay. And so 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 let let me put it into perspective. Let me give you a case case example. So if I'm trying to get better at drawing motorcycles. Right, or hard surface vehicles or things, then I need to just keep drawing them. And that's it. Yeah. And then as I draw them, I'll start to discover, oh, I need to practice ellipses, or I need to learn how the engine works, or how does a motorcycle drive. Then I'll start to draw that. But the idea is that I just need to just be drawing, regardless if I'm doing it right or not. Okay. So it's not like about putting a priority just <clears throat> yeah because you, you're 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 putting um the philosophy is flawed because you're putting a a, a a quantitative value to just practicing okay like you're saying like my practice has to be good yeah I see. where where the idea is no practice isn't supposed to be good practice is supposed to just be practice okay right yeah and the act of practice is actually is what makes you good. Does that make sense? So, yeah. so that barrier of entry is, is what I, I try to have people avoid. Okay. Like you should just be practicing, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and so when you bring your sketchbook with you, let's say you're just, you don't want to practice anatomy. Right. And if you created the standard of like, but I told myself I had to practice in it. Like, yeah, you'll get to it eventually. I'm sure. But like, if you just say, well, you know what? I just need to draw. And right now, I just want to draw these people that I see in a coffee shop. Okay. So, you know what so I mean? Just, just like, even if I'm at the moment not, you know, I'm not in the mood for whatever, just yes. draw something. All right, that's cool. Yeah. And then now, with that being said, you should still have some accountability. So let's say uh, you are, you have an agenda, like you want to practice anatomy. Yeah. Right? Because you feel like your anatomy and proportions need to be worked on. Then just give yourself a time limit. So for instance, like yeah. mandatory one hour a day. And so, so you can either do it all in one hour or you can do it like before you start to do like, I want to draw some faces today. But before I do, let me spend 15 minutes drawing some arms, right? Or drawing people, you know? And again, it's not, it doesn't have to be super focused. It just needs to be somewhat focused and accountable. And then once you're done with that 15 minutes, you can move on to whatever it is that you want to do, right? As, almost as a, as, right. a, as a reward. Okay, cool. And then if you do that four times in a day, you get your one hour quota, right? So you don't do, you don't do like number limits, you do time limits? Yeah, because then that way you're getting that time in. Okay. If you, 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 you remove the reason why you're uh, drawing, yeah. you, you replace it with, uh, I should just be drawing, you know? Yeah. Because ultimately, if you do that, you get good, right? Regardless yeah. if you're doing it wrong. And that's true for me because when I first started, I very, very much so was doing it wrong for quite okay. a long time. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah. And what helped what helped me out was that I was just doing it all the time. Yeah. All right. Right. And fair that's, enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, and that's the that's the thing that I think people don't think about it as a priority, but think about it. Yeah. As just getting. You just got to do it. Yeah, because yeah. like like a lot of times, like I said, a lot of people put too much stress on the the quantitative value of like trying to get better versus like um the actual just getting the work in okay wait hold on just a second Mm -hmm. all right hello yeah um but does that make sense yeah i got you okay cool yeah um like when i was learning programming like like i would just like even though I couldn't have like three hours to just sit down and just really practice programming, which I wanted to do a lot of the time. Yeah. I, um, I, it didn't matter. I just, uh, I would just find a way. So like when I go pick up my son or daughter from school and I had like 10, 15 minutes there, I, I would get this apps and I'll just like take tests, like how okay. like, like programming paradigms okay. right? or I would watch YouTube videos, you know? Yeah. And so like when I'm cooking, uh, I would watch videos or I'll listen to somebody explain or talk about it, you know? And that's kind of the point I'm trying to make with, uh, with you, you know, is that I think a lot of times people want to make sure that they're, they're doing it all right. Like I, I have a friend right now who just messaged me and he's like, Hey, you know, I'm going to begin my art journey. I really want to take it seriously. And you know, this is what I'm thinking. I'm just going to start practicing like painting boxes. And I'm like, no, you should just like first get like a, like a goal on like what you want to do and like what uh it is that you want to practice and then uh like why you know and mm-hmm. and then he was like okay sure you know like i want to like do more stylized stuff like for like frazetta aesthetic and and it's okay so then just start painting like frazetta and and make sure you do it every day like get a little bit of that in every day and then practice those boxes you know, because then those are going to help you paint like for Rosetta better for sure. Okay. But it's like, but it's like when you have that goal of like, I need to get better at art. I want to get better at whatever, right? That is like the large goal. Then you can start to get a little bit more, um, uh, like once, once you got that goal, then you can start to just begin and not worry about how you begin or how good it is. Like the whole idea is that you, you have a plan to get better and now you're you have a couple accountability tests and a philosophy that forces you to draw every day you know and that's ultimately kind of the point i'm trying to take a lot of pressure off (laughs) yeah so the the pressure part is the problem that i try to get people to avoid you know they feel a lot of pressure like to do good drawings out of the box and i'm like no you don't have to be like the greatest You just need to have, um, you just got to have that persistence. Like, I still recommend sharing the bad drawings. (laughs) Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's a bad idea either, right? Like, I have a friend who, who, that's all he did. He was just like sharing everything he ever worked on on his Instagram, and it didn't, it wasn't bad. He was getting followers still. And so it's like, like, it sounds like it would be a bad strategy. But, like, I don't see why it would be other than, like, the OCD aspect of it of, like, having that that garbage artwork on your (laughs) Instagram somewhere to be found, right? Yeah. But, but again, it's, like, it's, like, a weird, like, thing to be upset about. Like, especially if you're now, like, a rock star and you're doing great work. Like, why would you be mad that you once weren't good? (laughs) You know? It's really self-serving to your ego. It yeah. actually has no relevance to how people perceive you. In fact, if anything, it gives you a more of like a, a relatability to your fan base than it does like make people say, Ugh, you know, yeah. like nobody reacts. I, I don't know anybody that looks at their, their favorite artists, old work that's really trash and <laughs> be like, Ugh, why did I even like this artist? <laughs> that like, I can't imagine a scenario where that's happened. You know, it's yeah. usually the opposite, right? Where people are like, oh my gosh, like I have a yeah. chance, you know, like this is, this is super inspiring. Yeah. You know? And then, and then they become even more 
more attached to their favorite artists because they feel like they they can even relate more like this person it's no bullshit you know yeah and i think that's kind of the big takeaway i want to make sure that you have from what i'm saying to you you know yeah yeah because like i it can it can get really easy to get like yeah distracted with with all the other stuff of like oh man my drawings like everything that i have to show has to always be dope like i think that's unnecessary pressure um that we put onto ourselves that nobody else is actually putting onto us yeah yeah i probably do that to myself too much too yeah and so as long as you can kind of start to to separate the two yeah you'd be shocked of how much you'll improve all right wow you've given me a lot of good feedback this last week (laughs) yeah absolutely that's what I'm about. It goes well with the last advice you gave me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's really those two things, right? Like even we were talking when with Mike when Mike was here, he was because he we have a, a group chat and he was talking about how he lost weight like without even trying mm-hmm. because he was just like I need to like stop eating so much fast food, and then he lost like ten pounds, wow. and then he was just like, "What the?" And I was like, "Yeah, like people don't." want to acknowledge that um half of like weight loss and fitness is is what you eat you know and um and it's really that simple like you work out and you eat right that's really all you got to do and people don't work out and people don't eat right or they don't do one or the other or they don't do both you know yeah and and then they kind of look try to find shortcuts the the reason why they're the way they are is because they kept on taking shortcuts. They kept on giving into their impulses so that, that their intuition is, is already misguided. They need a different intuition to guide them. Yeah. You know, like yeah. don't trust your intuition. Um, <laughs> you know, like you need to retrain it, rebrand your intuition. So for, for, for a lot of you guys, it's kind of what I've done throughout the classes, like the retrain your intuition. So that way you have a better sense of why you should do things versus just doing them for the sake of, because it's comfortable is what you're used to. What you're used to hasn't improved your work or hasn't pushed your, um, your uh, progress in this, is in this industry, you know? And so yeah. you should, you should probably stop listening to it. Is what yeah. I'm getting at. yeah, you're right. It's like the intuitive eating movement that's happening. Yeah. Don't, don't do intuitive eating because, because, <laughs> Yeah, because your 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 body um, will always go for the easiest and tasteful, most tasty foods, you know. Yeah. Because it tastes good, like yeah. cheeseburgers, like bacon cheeseburgers, are delicious. <laughs> you know, yeah. like they're incredibly good. They taste delicious, but they're like probably the f- fast track to heart disease. Yeah, you know yeah uh, i mean i like to use extreme examples like crack and uh, meth they yeah. uh they taste or they make you feel real good you know antidepressants and like um um antidepressants and drugs make you feel real good mm-hmm. right so you probably should should recognize what like i um like there's a there's a political leader named uh jordan peterson a lot of people really like what he has to say and i think he's he's not a bad guy i think he's actually a a, a good person i don't really think he has any malicious intent he has some pretty strong beliefs that i disagree with um but i don't generally think that he's a bad dude in fact i think he does do good i think he does help some people really well right yeah i've seen it happen it's hard to deny it and so uh but like he has this like philosophy that i saw like about like He's like, you know, antidepressants, man. Like, like if, if it doesn't work for you, like you should try it. Like, but if it doesn't work for you, just quit. And when I heard that, I was just like, what? Like, what, th- does he understand like addiction is like a real thing, man? What is he fucking talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you can't just open to rehab though for addiction to antidepressants. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just yeah. like, yeah, take your own advice, dude. Just quit. It's like, no, man. It's it's a real epidemic. It's a real problem to discount like 
people's real depressions and and like when you're really really depressed and you take drugs and it relieves that depression you get addicted man you know yeah. um like they gave me norcos uh which is like a painkiller mm -hmm. for my surgery i i actively tried to get off of it you know there was i think it was like the sixth day after my surgery i was off of it entirely i still have pills left and i'm just gonna throw it away right yeah. uh, but i was still in pain but i knew like i don't want to like like i only want to tolerate i don't want to tolerate extreme pain you know but like yeah. kind of pain i i should just tolerate it. there's no reason to just like take a narcos for pain levels at like four or five just for the sake of it because you could yeah you can totally get addicted and and they they actively give you like only like ten days worth of painkillers anyways, right? Like so even if I took them every day, uh, I can easily run out in like three or four days because you could take them periodically throughout the day. But like yeah. I I actively even like my first surgery I I don't want to fall into that. Uh, I have strong will, so it didn't it it didn't work. You know I don't get too yeah. caught up in that world. But like it works though. Like I felt great. You know, I felt yeah. real good. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I fight against my intuitions. I, I follow what I believe is, is to be right, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and what I see to work. And so he, he's a man of intuition. Uh, he, he has a lot of philosophies and ideals that are intu intuitively based. And that is my main issue with the guy, right? Because oh, not yeah. all of what he says intuitively uh, pan pans out. Uh, some do, like for instance, the idea of cleaning your room, like this is kind of like his catchphrase. <laughs> that's, uh, the, that's the thing I know him from. Was yeah, and I bad. and I agree with this, like <laughs> this idea of like organizing your life and getting yeah. like that is something that I think is true and has value and is great advice. Uh, but then I heard him one time talk about how we should let all the wealthy people be in control of the money <laughs> because they know how to keep money. Like that's kind of his principle, basically saying that poor people don't know how to. So intuitively, that makes sense, right? Like, oh, yeah, like poor people stay poor because they don't know how to manage their money. But if you know anything about being poor or have met poor people, yeah. uh, sometimes it's not as simple as they're poor because they don't know how to manage their money. Yeah. Being poor is actually more expensive in a lot of ways because, for instance, you can't have a bank account, so you have to constantly yeah. get money out through other means, which actually costs money, right? Mm -hmm. And so if, you already have some, if you're already somebody that doesn't have money, and you have to spend money to get money, right? Yeah. That that actually is an exponential thing. Uh, and a lot of people who are wealthy aren't wealthy because they know how to manage their money. There are, some of them are wealthy because their parents were wealthy or their, or their grandparents were wealthy. And yeah. they were able to make a lot of financial and idiotic um, financial decisions and recover from them, yeah. right? Because they were able to get like, they were able to like you know, uh, get out of jail free card type of thing, yeah. you know, um, where like if they get a speeding ticket, they can afford to get out of the speeding ticket. If you're a poor person, speeding ticket could actually ruin, ruin your whole month, right? Yeah. It's, it's not as simple as, well, let the rich people have the money. It's a very capitalistic uh, perspective of responsibility, but it's intuitive, right? Like if you just think of it on face value, you're like, yeah. Rich people do have money and they don't, they do know how to manage it. But then when you start to actually think about it, you're like, no, wait a minute. That's not true. You know, like poor people aren't necessarily like financially or fiscally irresponsible, you know? Okay. And in fact, I have a, I have a belief that a lot of uh, politicians are, are very financially and fiscally irresponsible. This is why they steal money from the, the taxpayers and, yeah and constantly take money from lobbyists because they are the ones that keep buying yachts and shit. <laughs> and then they need <laughs> to keep living that lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I so, think there was a funny story on that. There's a, uh, I forget if it was a Congress person or someone that worked for the government here in, in Las Vegas and they got caught like spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on like app games through Facebook. <laughs> I, I think like, I heard about that actually. Like, yeah, it was really bad. No, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, it's it's clearly a it's it's a it's a weird statement that he made. But like but like uh 
intuition is really attractive because it's like so easy to understand it at, on the principle, right? Yeah. But you need, um, there, there, here's, a, here's a, a good way to think about this and I'll kind of relate this to art. Um, you, sh you should look at generalities and averages, right? Okay. And you need to get as much, you need to get as much of, uh, you need to get as many variables on the table as possible. Okay. All right, so let me let me make a, a little diagram. I saw this on a great talk, and I think it holds true. Basically, it's like imagine you have hospital A and hospital B, right? Mm -hmm. And if all I gave you was the information of hospital A admits a um, thousand people, and so does hospital B, and out of out of those a thousand people, um, you know, or I guess it doesn't really matter the the that, well, yeah, we can use thousand out of uh the thousand people at hospital a uh 200 like 200 people um die uh like die okay oh, okay All right so like 200 people die at the end out of a thousand so there's like 800 people who do not die okay mm -hmm. and then a uh, hospital uh b um only uh 10 people die yeah. Right. So with this information, intuitively, you're like, well, then hospital B must be a better hospital. Yeah. If that's all the information you do. And this is how a lot of people who debate dishonestly, this is how they use numbers. They'll use yeah. a very, very like um, Simple, yeah. strict variable out of context. And, and, and it, it strings to your intuitions and your common sense versus reality. Right. That's why some of the greatest minds on our planet, like mathematicians and astrophysicists and engineers and what have you, they live in a world that goes beyond human intuition. Right. There's mathematical equations that are not intuitive at all, but you put them through a simulation, you put them into the real world and they work because huh. because humans were not built to understand mathematical equations. I have a philosophy that there is or a hypothesis that there is like a actual fourth dimension, maybe even multiple dimensions, not in like a weird like sci-fi way, like actual physical dimensions, which could help explain gravity. But because we're like fucking apes on a earth on a planet on a rock, we can't perceive perceive it because we never needed to. Like where a mantis shrimp can see like ultraviolet rays, but we don't need to see it. Birds can sense magnetic waves, man magnetic fields. Right, that's just why they can like travel long distances without a compass or any kind of thing. They can feel it. They know where they're at. They have like an internal GPS. We don't because we don't need. We never needed it, and so we use machines and technology and science and math to help us see things that our human minds can't intuitively understand. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I always say, don't listen to your intuition. It's probably wrong. Okay. And and so the way you fight against this is you need more information, right? So, so, well, why is this? Why is this the case? So, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at some more numbers. So, if I give you another number, and say that <clears throat> that seventy five percent of the people that go to this hospital are terminally ill, like they're going to die probably. Yeah. Okay. Or if I said like a hundred, let's just keep it real simple. If I said a hundred percent are terminally ill, right? That means all thousand of these people are coming here because they're gonna their lives are going to be safe, but because it's hard to save people's lives, 200 people will die. So about 80% of people actually survive, 20% of the people die. But they all come in terminally ill, yeah. all right? Now this hospital, let's say, is just your general hospital, and only 20 people come in that are terminally ill, okay? And this is a flat number, 20 people. Yeah. And I said 10 people die, right? So 10 out of 20, right? That's 50% of the people here who are terminally ill die. Okay. So with this new information, because we now we say 20% here die, right? Because all the people going, it's like a thousand people come in here are terminally ill, right? Yeah. And only 200 people die. So that's 20% of the people who come in. If 10, 10 people die out of 20, that's 50%. So now with this new information, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. It's clear that A is actually the better hospital to go to your yeah. chances of survival are much higher, right? And most likely it's because this is a specialized one where this is just a general practice, right? And for, yeah. 
they would probably tell you to go fucking go over here, <laughs> you know, yeah. because they're not built for it, which is the case for me, for instance. Like, I go to my general hospital. They say I need to have surgery. They say I have to go over here to get surgery because that's what they do. Yeah. You know? But if I only gave you this first information, then sure, yeah. On the face value, it seems pretty accurate. Yeah. So, so why, how is this related to art? Well, so I had a student once say he went to a Shadi Safadi talk, and Shadi Safadi was basically saying, like, you got to photo bash. Like, if you don't photo bash, you'll never make it in this industry. Right? Wow. You got to use 3D, you got to photo bash. And then he went and saw Marco Djurjevic's talk and Marco was like, you got to draw and you got to paint, right? Don't use any photo yeah. bashing. Don't use any 3D. It's all about the being an artist. If you don't do this, yeah, you're not going to make it mm-hmm. in our company, right? And my student went to both of these talks and he came to me afterwards and he said, I've never been so confused in my life. Yeah. And I yeah. said... Well, let's look at the variables. So you have one guy telling you to use photo, photo bashing or one guy telling you to paint everything. Well, does this person work? Yes, of course. Does this person work? Yes, of course. Right? I say, what is, what is the work that this guy does? Well, he does a lot of movies and AAA games that are, are more realistic. The genre is realism. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what about these guys? And I was like, well, they're illustrators. They do illustrations. And their genre is like comics and splash art. Right? Yeah. So I was like, the problem that you're having is that these are two different disciplines. And they're both right and they're both wrong. You wouldn't want to follow this philosophy for this strategy. And you wouldn't want to follow this philosophy for that strategy yeah right i was like what's that third variable you're missing because you just took it on face value like as like a a broad statement about art in general like there's more to it you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) bless you you know there's cases huh someone's talking about you (laughs) well that would be sneezing all the time then but like (laughs) um (laughs) but but you see my point like if you're focused on just like the face value question and answer, right? Like what that person just said, like literally quite said. Yeah. I can see how that can be really uh, distracting to your kind of overall principled principles as a, as a starting artist, you know, like yeah. you're just starting out. But I said, but like, that's kind of my point is, is that, you know, you want to like look at all, like get all the information and then make it more educated assertion. Because otherwise, yeah, you're going you're going to be misguided uh, greatly, you know? Yeah. And, and then I told him that. He, it made a lot more sense. He's like, oh, okay, yeah. And so I, the better question isn't so much of, like, what's the right one, like, in general. It's yeah. what's the right one for you. If you want to be an illustrator, then Marco's advice makes a lot of sense. Then do that. If you want to be a uh, concept artist for film and triple-A games that are more on a realistic element, like Uncharted or Modern Warfare, these types of games, I'm assuming, right? Then you need to go in that direction. Um, Don't photo bash if you want to be an illustrator. You don't need to photo bash. You don't need to ever learn how to do that, right? Yeah. Uh, If you want to be a concept artist for stylized games, then neither of their advice is necessarily helpful, right? Because uh, stylized games don't necessarily need photo bashers. They need uh, painters, but they don't need painters. They need designers as well. So you need a little bit of what you would get from like Shadi Safadi's world, as well as what's, um, uh, what's expected in, um, what you call it, in uh, Marco Djurjevic's world, because design is hard. In fact, uh, one of my buddies who worked at Riot told me how like when, they started to kind of shift over some of their um, their illustrators because a lot of their illustrators, like, you know, they would get in, but then they were like, oh, you know, I want to work on the games. I want to design. I want to help out. Uh, and they weren't doing really well um, because they didn't know how to be designers. Yeah. They were actually struggling quite a bit 
and he said like one of the guys was very like egotistical about it like he was he said it wasn't bad like it wasn't like like a real problem it was just annoying like he was just kind of being a diva about it because yeah. from from every point after or every point before that incident he was just like always praised mm-hmm. for his immaculate paintings like his paintings are so amazing mm-hmm. you know um but then when he started designing and he would just do like one painting and it's just like really nicely painted but it wasn't really that good of a design you know because usually when he illustrates someone else's design you know yeah uh it was a kind of it was a rude awakening you know and so yeah my point is is that like you need to get all the variables in play before you can kind of make a real assertion about something before you before you feel real confident about what your your positions are you know i a lot of my advice a lot of the feedback that i give to you guys seems so helpful uh, a lot of the times is because i do consider all of the variables that potentially could go and uh, as many as i can think of and it's become more of a a theory versus like an opinion at some point you know okay. because the opinion is like i like robots and monsters right but a theory mm-hmm. is like layer cake that's universal regardless of like layer kicking or rules of three or balancing your contrast and unity that that's universal regardless of what style what genre that's really helpful to just be good at no matter what you do yeah you know and i like to really focus in on that kind of stuff versus um like my personal opinion of what i think is good because what i think is good is like very popcorn movie stuff i really like that kind of like over the top, like I didn't get to watch Hob- Hobbs and Shaw or whatever with fucking The Rock and uh, yeah. Jason Statham, Jason Statham. <laughs> yeah. Like I want to watch that movie though. I love those like testosterone driven <laughs> movies. Uh, it's amazing. It, yeah, I, I bet it is. I, I love those movies. And I know not everybody does. It's like over the top and it's like cartoony as hell. And I'm like, yep. I'm all about that. I love uh, Pacific Rim. I like the, that movie. I, lo- I like those types of movies. Transformers, hands down, my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> not, not really. It's just one of my favorite movies. Too. I love Transformers. The first one, especially. It's one of my faves. Um, See, it was good, actually. <laughs> At yeah, least I like I it. remember it fondly. Yeah, I like it a lot, man. People like to hate on that those movies. Uh, Michael Bay is making another movie with Ryan Reynolds. I'm excited for that one. Oh, wow. I wish he did uh, Bad Boys 3. I know there's uh, some other directors, and it looks cool. But I kind of like feel like it's not going to be as cool. Like I think Michael Bay should have directed it, but we'll see. Once I watch it, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know at some point. <laughs> but anyway... So that's kind of the way you should think about, like, just in general, like all this stuff. Like, you should have this philosophy of, um, you know, getting getting all the information. Don't rely on your t- intuition all too much because okay. follow principled ideas that go against your intuition, but just make logical sense with all things considered. Okay. Right. If you consider, oh, if I'm drawing every day, I'm going to get better. That's just a simple fact then I should try to avoid things that prevent me from drawing rather than focusing on having quality practice time. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's pretty fair. Actually yeah. really good advice. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that it's wrong to try to have great practice. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But first you got to build that habit of drawing consistently and then you can start to get like real into the weeds because at that point you've created a great habit of just consistently drawing versus like, you're always battling to even get started, you know, let's get started first. Let's get that ball rolling. And then, and then you can start getting getting really into the weeds of like, okay, I need to be a lot more focused. I need to like have a little bit more guidance. Yeah. I see what you mean. It's basically about creating like almost like a workout plan. Yes. (coughs) Yes. All right. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Always a pleasure. Oh.
So and you're practicing. Yeah, it's much closer yeah. to what I was saying, man. Yeah, I just said. Yeah, that's definitely getting closer to what I'm I'm trying to get you to do more of. So absolutely. Keep doing that. Yo. Yeah. Instead of just um just detailing those lumps, you know? Yep. <laughs> getting those lumps looking real lumpy. Now I get it, man. Like it feels great to just render lumps. Uh thanks. Sigh of relief. <laughs> it's nice, man. I had a very different perception about you before the class. Oh, really? So I saw all your videos, and you were like, I thought you might be straight or something, like because of the way you talk, your sound, your voice. What? What? A, <laughs> where did you get that from? I don't even no, think that's as true. A, no, as a strong voice personality, people are oh, often I see. strict. Uh, uh, I see. So, um, that's what I thought. Maybe I don't know. If we didn't do our homework, maybe you're gonna yell at us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I used to do that. Uh, not yeah? not like not yell, um, but like <laughs> I would get real firm. Um, and I used to do that. And the reason why I don't do that anymore, mm -hmm. or or at all, um, mm -hmm. is because it's it's again, you know, with all variables considered. You gotta like, you gotta like look at the reality of it, right? Uh, so let, let me let me let me look at let me let me put it to to you in mm -hmm. some context. So like, so intuitively uh, this idea of like yeah you know tough love whatever right like mm -hmm. just really getting in there and shouting at people um, seems super dope like hardcore training and it's kind of very Western ideal and, and romance romancing of like true grit. Um, but if you look at the numbers, uh, more people quit because of this, right? And, and when, when more people quit or stop, um, mm -hmm. I, I had a question to, to myself. And the question was very simple, which was that like, as an educator, mm -hmm. wouldn't, it, wouldn't it have more value as an educator to maintain more retention, meaning maintaining more attendance and more submissions, right? right. Then, then it is to just like keep only the strong. Because if you really think about it, those people who are already like painting every day, drawing all the time and already have a lot of skill, they're mm -hmm. probably gonna keep doing that even without your class. And when, you, when they're in your class, you're only compounding something that they already are capable of doing on their own. So all, what I'm getting at is like, like um, you're really not actually like accenting these people uh, anymore. They're, they're, they're going to be good regardless. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And, and so as an educator, is that really something to be proud of? Of like, I'm really good at telling good people to keep being good? Mm. Or is it better to get someone who, let's say, is like that lazy student who is that student that doesn't turn in their work all the time? That student that isn't, um, you know, inspired to get that student to the high echelons of pro status and working amongst like some of the greatest kinds of artists. Isn't that a better example of yeah. like, education versus um, just shouting at people and just weeding out the weak, right? Yeah. And, sure. and so that's kind of what made me realize that I, I I was not doing what I thought. Like, I want to be good at educating. Mm. I don't want to just be a good painter that tells people how to do it. And, and uh, I have a great story about why this, I've converted to this philosophy. Mm -hmm. I had a student once mm -hmm. who she, uh, she was telling me, like, she doesn't want to study anatomy. And, or, I'm sorry, she didn't want to study anatomy through photos. And I thought that was crazy. You know, it's like, you gotta, because like, it's so resourceful, you know, it's so many places where you can study and like, you're not limited to your location and going to life drawing. Like you're really, you're really opening up some doors, mm. right? To like, to be able to practice more. And she just did not want to do it because she just, there's like some sort of principled idea about like practicing uh, as an artist that she just wanted to keep it real, uh, real artsy you know only do life drawing in uh in in real life 
Yeah. And I was just telling her that was crazy, you know? And my approach to that was just real aggressive. I was really aggressive about it, you know? Yeah. Pretty much calling her stupid. And um, she just did not obviously respond to that. I didn't literally call her stupid, but like pretty much that's what I was trying to allude to. Like, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. And she didn't, she didn't respond to that very well. And then mm -hmm. she ended up like dropping the class. Oh. And, and so in some teachers' minds, they'll be like, well, you know, good riddance. Like she was not willing to take feedback. Mm -hmm. So like, what's she going to expect? Like, she's just going to go out into the world and just people are going to just let her like, just, 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 they're just going to take it on the chin. It's like, nah, man, she, uh. needed, she needed to wake up eventually. And I'm glad that I helped wake her up. Um, here's how I perceived it. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, well, honestly, though, she was a good student. Like, she had great work. Like, I, I don't think that it was, like, the greatest in the universe. Mm -hmm. She clearly needed to work on her anatomy, <laughs> you know? All right. But, like, it was a good start. Like, it was a great start. Uh, and I felt like if she kept at it, like, I don't know where she's at now. I don't, I have not seen her or anyone uh, talk about her in any capacity. So I feel like she might've mm -hmm. even just quit art in general. Okay. And I always think about that, right? I think about like what I said to her was not wrong. Mm -hmm. She needed to work on anatomy. Um, but maybe how I said about it, or how I said it to her and mm -hmm. more importantly, um, uh, you know, like how she perceived it and how I was not sympathetic uh, to her problems. And so I, I think about that all the time and, and it goes back to kind of this, this point I'm making right now mm -hmm. was that I wasn't trying to weed out the weak. Yeah. You know, I was trying to help people become great artists. I can totally agree. <clears throat> and so so chewing people out is, 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 is a tactic that only works on people, people like me, who if you tell them that they can't do something, I yeah, get a little back. bit more driven to do it even harder, you know? Uh, and, and it's clear to me that there's not a lot of people like that. And I'm not even saying that that's a good thing, that like I have that trait, right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that there's a lot of really good artists that I've met in my life that aren't mm -hmm. like me, that aren't like this crazy, like, competitive spirit they just draw and they love drawing and they because of that love of drawing they got really good at it you right. know yeah. uh so the the, the variable <laughs> that was true for them and mm -hmm. true for me that, that connects both of us is their persistence that's the real that's the real money ticket it's not anything else and if i can get people to keep drawing right yeah they're going to eventually do great. So that's kind of my philosophy of education. So of course, now I don't yell at people or anything. I try to prevent, mm -hmm. I don't want people to feel insecure about their capabilities. In fact, I want to demonstrate to them that they are, not only are they capable, uh, but they're, they're on their way. Yeah. You know? Because that's ultimately, true. if you do that, um, the students will keep getting better and better and better to the point where it's unavoidable for them yeah. to get to not get work you know and it's like i just mentioned i'm gonna meet up with like two of my students i'm actually trying to mm -hmm. i'm gonna probably wrap this up pretty soon so i can get ready to go um who are great examples of this um both of them are some of my earlier students and they drew a lot nice. um, especially uh my my student nico he's a really good example of this he mm -hmm. um he's been drawing for quite a long time and i remember in my class he was pretty good uh but he exploded in goodness uh, in the span of a year or so because he just oh. was very persistent and he got really really good so good that you know six more vodka obviously needed to hire him oh that's cool yeah. man in fact i have quite a few students who've worked for them so i'm starting to think that the six more vodka guys are like all about hiring my students dude um <laughs> I I uh, I uh, I think it's funny too because I don't think I could work for Six More Vodka. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't, and I'm I'm friends with Marco Jodorjevic, like the guy who owns the. Yeah, company. yeah, he owns. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't think he would hire me ever. <laughs> like even if I asked him, I'm like, oh man, I really need work. I maybe maybe he would if I'm like really like t- like desperate. I'm like, oh, dude, I really uh, am struggling. I think he'd be the kind of guy that like, you know what? Like, okay, we have this project. We could use some extra hands. We'd love mm-hmm. to have you. You know. Um, yeah. But uh, I think it was only in that scenario. He's never really reached out to me <laughs> in any other capacity, other than like, hey, do you know anybody that might um, be be good? You know, he's reached out to me in that capacity before. Nice. And I have. And then he said, no, nope, these people are good. You were right. And they hired my students like right away. And so um, that's why I always encourage you guys. Like, it's not a matter of networking as, as much as you might think. Because if you're really, really good, I can. it's easier for me to like push you through the ranks of my peers who ask me all the time of like, if I know somebody. Um. I'm like, I do. I, I happen to do know somebody who might be or fancy. So another small question for you. Yeah, man. How did we connect? How did we connect with you? Like, if we want to share a work or something? Yeah, I actually have been pretty good on messaging back either via email, uh, but mm-hmm. even better through Instagram. My Facebook okay. has gotten out of control and I've mitigated <laughs> it just to just my friends now. Um, okay. And then my art station is out of control. So again, I mitigate it through, um, oh. through, uh, I got like Mike helps me for instance with this type mm-hmm. of stuff. And so I mitigate it this way instead of uh, focusing on like finding the right platform to try to respond to every single person. I just, uh, I've just, just decided to start using Instagram as my place, well, That's cool. which might not be smart either because eventually <laughs> oh, excuse me eventually that's going to start blowing up but for now it's good but email my my website email is probably the best way eventually to get to me oh okay that's cool nice yep all right i'm gonna take one more question and then i'm gonna roll out of here get ready No questions, huh? Hey, Content if nobody's life. asking, let me ask. <laughs> You're like, hey, man, I'm up. I got questions for fucking years, dude. <laughs> dude, I can sit for hours and ask you things, man. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, okay, uh, one small technical question that uh, have you used uh, any Android device as a tablet? Like, uh, as compared to the Apple iPro? No, I have Oh, okay, so the only Apple... only one that I've done was just on my phone. Oh, your phone? <laughs> yeah, I've done a paintings on my phone. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually posted one recently too. It's um, it is, <clears throat> it is this one. This was painted on my phone. Whoa. Damn, dude. What phone are you using? iPhone. No, Samsung Note. What? Uh, Samsung Note 9. Shit. It's all about, the, that's it's all about them values, dude. Yeah, infinite. Yeah. <laughs> totally, dude. So it doesn't have pressure sensitivity, and yet you did a good job. No, uh, no, mine does have a little bit, oh. so it's 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 not like completely just like fingers. <laughs> it's there's some because the Galaxy Note comes with the pen, and ah, so yeah. and there is some pen pressure. Um, but okay. like, but like even if it didn't, I, I think I could still pull it off. It's just that the fact that it did have pen pressure made it so much easier, and so, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, of course, I had some pen. So pressure. the Apple iPad Pro does it have? The iPad Pro has pressure too, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it helps a lot. And so, yeah. so I I always recommend, like it's funny though, because when I did the, the, the painting recently of my wife, uh, mm-hmm. one of my friends was like, he thought I did it on my phone. Mm. And some other guy, when I did another painting, he's like, oh, did you use uh, Procreate or Infinite Painter? And it was a like Photoshop. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> 
Like that's kind of like the point, you know. Like nobody knows how the fuck exactly. they do it, whatever. It's they just uh-huh. it's just consistent. And Actually. the reason why my work is consistent is because of my uh, foundational painting prowess, you know. Yeah. And that that is that is what I always teach you guys. Like get them foundations solid. That is by far the most important thing. Everything else is not important right um yep. and then or at least for now and then as you get that foundation solid and mm-hmm. then you begin to start to paint you know mm-hmm. you begin to start to uh design uh on your own uh on different tools and stuff you will feel a, an easy and natural transition okay you don't yeah, because because um, people like want to like oh what brushes and what was this and that you know, yeah. and and those are important. I'm not actually I don't think that that argument of like people should stop thinking about brushes. Uh, I don't think that argument is entirely a valid like rebuttal of like stop focusing on brushes. Like I think that brushes do help. You know, there's very clearly like so many painters who paint with all sorts of different brushes and they do amazing paintings. Um, but I think the, the core message about why you shouldn't focus on it, uh, that makes sense, which is that, you know, brushes won't all of a sudden make you paint like a master, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. that, that part, I understand the argument and I usually stay in that lane, but I, I've gotten away from this principled idea of like, it's really not about the brushes. No, brushes help a lot dude, and tools help a lot. Like I'm not painting like traditionally, I'm doing everything digitally. So clearly, yeah. I, I, I'm not entirely voided of like, you know, like practicing uh, or like being able to do something like that I can do in a different medium. That would be a challenge for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it wouldn't be as challenging as it would have been in the past. I feel like I can, like even my wife, I did these like line drawings, uh, mm-hmm. at sketch groups, and even my wife yeah. was just like, whoa, like you could draw like really good. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm a good artist, you know. She's like, oh, I felt like because her even her perception of digital painting is like I'm like cheating it somehow, you know. Uh. <laughs> like, which is understandable. It is kind of it is kind of cheating. It's really easy yeah. to like manipulate your image and do all Fixing, this good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Things. Yeah, it's th- there is like there is an element that's not false here, but like it's just funny that she thought that it re- was all entirely just tricks. <laughs> you know I, I personally don't do that i think it's cheating so i'd rather erase it and redraw it again yeah and so i um i uh i tell people like just learn the foundations and then when you do work cheat all day right <laughs> because okay. you're you're not you're you're not getting paid for how artistic you are about your execution you're only getting wow. paid for your execution so if your execution is taking you three months to get done where someone mm-hmm. like me can do it in an hour, they're going to pay yeah. me and hire me, you know, especially yeah. if the result is very similar. And so I think when you're studying and learning, you should, yeah, you shouldn't cheat because you're only really cheating your own abilities. But when you're actually doing work, like when you're building portfolio pieces, go mm-hmm. hard, dude, use liquify, fucking clone stamp, like lasso <laughs> tool, make that, make that artwork look amazing, you know? <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> but when you're learning, yeah, don't be liquefying. What the hell are you doing? Like you're trying to learn how to draw better, you know? Yeah. Like don't That's correct true. your bad drawing when you're trying to study. You're supposed to. It's supposed to be shitty. You, just look at it and observe why you made that mistake, and then don't make it again. You know? Wow. Yeah. But when you're trying to like make like a portfolio piece, yeah, cheat all day, dude. All day cheat. <laughs> okay. Because you know? okay. that's yeah. what you're gonna get paid for is that quality image, and if if they find out it takes you seven years to paint because you're like, I like to paint every pixel by hand, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> cool, dude, that's a great story, <laughs> but you're not going to get work, you know? Yeah. And so uh, that's, that's usually my advice is like, don't get caught up in the, the art of making art. Right. Uh, yeah. It is still a professional field where you need to be professional and be able mm. to produce results. Anyway, yep. I'm going to leave you guys with all that. Um, I'm going to make some final touches. 
And as I make those final touches, I will say this. It's been an honor to teach you guys. You guys have been great. I appreciate all of you guys. Um, you guys keep up the good work. Keep on practicing. Don't be strangers to each other either. Keep in touch. You know, you never know, right? And it's really important that you, you don't stop engaging with the community. You try to post as often as you can to build that reputation on your own end. Obviously, the better you get, the easier it is for people to share, including myself. And uh, I always will be around. You can always message me from here and from now and then. If you can get a hold of me through Facebook, that'd be great. If, but like I said, Instagram is my new strats of getting a hold of people. Um, and so, or people can get a hold of me. So don't be afraid to message me there. I, I will not block you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, in fact, I, I, I've been talking to almost everybody, including somebody who wants me to draw a picture of his dog, which there's a really sad story behind it. So I'm actually considering doing it because it seems like a really nice thing to do, but <clears throat> I, uh, I do respond to people and I think it's, it's a, it's a great opportunity for you guys to keep in touch. Uh, some of you guys already talked to me on Facebook, so it's even easier to do that if you can't already. Uh, or if you already do that, you know how to get a hold of me. And outside of that, again, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate all the time spent working on the assignments and trying to do your best. Good luck to you guys, and I'll see you guys around. Cheers. Thank you so much, AJ. Absolutely. Take care, Peace. bud. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.